It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. It's Express All Right here on SABC3. Now, in 2017, the unemployment rate in South Africa sat at 27.7%, a 13 year high. Now, for many young people, the solution is to turn to entrepreneurship. Unfortunately, many don't have access to resources or even knowledge, and starting your own business is a daunting task. However, business expert and author Nakwazi Mzobe has written a book tailored to a South African market called the Small Business Handbook. And what's even more exciting is that it's now been translated into Isi Zulu as well. But let's meet the lady of the moment, Nakwazi. Good morning. How are you? I'm oh, well, thanks. And you? I'm so good and so excited about this handbook. Let's first of all talk about, um, before we talk about the, the, the new version, let's talk about why you decided to write the Small Business Handbook. I think I was inspired by my journey yeah. and also I lecture and mentor entrepreneurs and I, I noticed people asking me, where, where can I get information? Yeah. Where can I get information? And even when I started, I went to a lot of people and said, I need this, I need information on this, can you help me? And I just thought, what if there was just a single resource where I could go to get some help in terms of where I can find certain information? Yeah. And that's why I'm so happy. I want to give you a high five, girl. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're one-stop <laughs> shop for everything that you want to know. What are some of the business challenges that are unique to South African entrepreneurs? I think for me, the big word is access. Yeah. Um, and that would be access to customers, to markets, even something as small as just access to the internet so you could register on CIPC instead of having to catch a taxi or drive to the other side of time, town to register your business. Yeah. So for me, I think that's probably just that, word access exactly. to a whole lot of things. I love that. Now, with our very high unemployment rate that we just talked about a bit earlier on, a lot of young people are turning to entrepreneurship, yes. but what kind of resources are available to them? I think we're very lucky in South Africa at the moment yeah. that there's a drive behind that. And so you, there are a lot of corporates like Procter & Gamble, who started a leadership academy to support entrepreneurs. Um, I know a lot of the business schools have entrepreneurial programs, and they're pro bono, yeah. um, that are really addressing um, the entrepreneurial challenges, specifically youth-focused and even now township-focused, mm -hmm. um, to, to really help propel young people going forward. Exactly. Well, I know a lot of people are watching right now, salivating at the thought of getting their hands on this book. What do you think is the very first step to becoming an entrepreneur? For me, it's mindset. It's it's about, because it really is a journey and it's quite difficult. So if you have the right mindset in terms of, can I solve a problem? And then like, how can I just, you know, a lot of people will say, I can't find money, I need funds. Yeah. And if you have the right mindset to say, I may not have a lot of money, but how can I just solve this problem to ensure that I'm able to get, I don't know, 500 Rand to get started? So for me, that's the big thing. Mindset, mindset, mindset. Mindset is where you begin. Well, if you've been wanting to know where to start, mindset is where you start, but also getting your hands on the small business handbook is very essential too. We talk about the translation of this book into Isizulu after this. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, very exciting stuff. I do believe that the future belongs to entrepreneurs. We're sitting this morning with business expert and author Nokwazi Mzobe talking about her book, uh, The Small Business Handbook, and of course the fact that it's now been translated into Isi Zulu. Nokwazi, why the decision to translate it into Zulu? I think for me, when we say that we have such a high unemployment rate, um, well, one of the gaps is um, skills. Mm. And then when you think that one of the barriers um, to just comprehension is that people are not taught in their mother tongues. And yeah, you have 11 yeah, yeah. official languages. So why don't we have business content in our yeah. indigenous languages? And so for me, um, starting with Isi Zulu, where 11 point, I think, 7 million people speak wow. it in our country, I just thought that would be a great place to start. Exactly. Yeah. And that's amazing because there's nothing Nothing better than being able to learn in your mother tongue or read a book in your yes. mother tongue. Just grabbing that information and knowledge is so much more powerful as yes. well. But what are some of the challenges when you tailor a book towards a Zulu readership or any other readership that's not English? I think for me, the first thing is finding the right translators. Yeah. Um, because you know you have to have somebody who understands business. Of course. And I guess also if you think about it, we. Um, 
we don't necessarily have those some of those terms yeah. in um, in our indigenous exactly. languages. They yeah. it, they have to be coined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think for me, finding the right translation company with the right people who have the expertise to do that, because I mean I don't have yeah. that. Yeah. And I think for me, it's also you know the expense of translating is quite big. So I mean I was very lucky that I was able to approach um, Procter and Gamble to partner with me mm -hmm. and to assist me to to do that. So I think for me, it's just the funding part was a big challenge and the, getting the right expertise. Oh, look at you. Look yes. at you. That's amazing. Is there any chance of translating it into other languages as well? Um, so my big hero, audacious goal is to get it into all 11 South African languages. Um, <laughs> but if I can get at least two or three this year, um, that would be my target. I love that you've also made the book available in various libraries all around the country, but where else can people find it? Well, it's available on our website mm -hmm. at uh, matoyana, M-A-T-O-Y-A-N-A, -A mm -hmm. dot C-O dot and they must just um, click on shop. And for any young South African that's been inspired, because I'm inspired just sitting here talking to you and looking through the book, what would your advice be for anyone who wants to become an entrepreneur in 2018? I think for me, it's one, identify a problem or a need that people have and try to solve that. Um, step number two, make sure that um, people would want to pay money for that. And then three is be fearless. Just kind of just do it and learn and you'll make mistakes. Yeah. But guess what? You can always start over. Never a mistake, always a lesson. Yes, I definitely. Love it. And then just finally to end off, don't you want to paint a picture for us quickly? Looking at it maybe in terms of five or ten years from now with young people following their entrepreneurial dreams, what would you like South Africa to look like? I think for me, my, my vision for South Africa is for one, probably less than 1% unemployment, and for people to be doing it for themselves. I think they, there's just so much freedom um, and just um, empowerment and just knowing that I can wake up and go create something for yeah. myself. So I would love a country of creators and, and a country of, solver, of problem solvers and just positive thinking. So that's that's what I'd love to see for South Africa. Well, thank you for the leading the way in that, Nokwazi. You. You're an absolute inspiration and I think every single person needs to get their hands on the sport the small business handbook it really is an incredible resource for anyone who's thinking of becoming an entrepreneur